Last week I spoke to you in this service about being overcomers. And I based my thoughts on the book by Harold Hill, How to Be a Winner. And I hear that the Keswick Bookstore has already sold out. So don't go there. The question I asked you was this. In your life at this time, are you a winner or are you a loser? The loser is the person who is not in Jesus Christ. And if you've come into this service tonight and you do not know Jesus as your Savior, you are a loser. If, on the other hand, you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and He's dwelling in you, you are a winner. And when you look into the Word of God, you find something very significant. God says to us from His Word, He wants His people to be winners and to live their lives in victory and never in defeat. And in the words of Harold Hill, he calls us to be king's kids because we're sons and daughters of the king of kings. And because we're king's kids, we have special rights and privileges. And also we have special responsibilities. Is your life in Jesus Christ tonight as you sit here in this sanctuary or are you still waiting in the world wondering if it's worthwhile to give up all the wonderful things that you have because if you're in that situation the Bible says you're in defeat also the Bible says that once Jesus Christ has come into our lives we have overcome the world and that's why I said to you last week that we've become overcomers. I want to go a step further tonight and talk about overcomers in training. Every one of us here as an overcomer in Jesus Christ, someone who's overcome the world, we're in training. And we are moving to the time when the Lord Jesus Christ will make us perfect in Himself and we will spend the rest of eternity with our Lord Jesus and because we're overcomers, because we're Christian believers, we have special rights and privileges. Special rights and privileges. Now, these things are not for non-Christians. If you're sitting here as someone who's never brought Jesus Christ into your life, you've never been to the foot of the cross and said to Jesus, I'm sorry for what I've done wrong and allow Him to come into your life, you're not a Christian. And because you're not a Christian, what I'm going to say does not apply to you. But it can do, and it will do, when you by faith come to Jesus, and look up into His face there on the cross, and say and mean, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. And it'll be done. And it's as simple as that. And we always try to find the difficulty and the problem and the snag. And there isn't one. The only difficulty and snag is that some of you have never come to Jesus. And you've never said you're sorry. And you're not a Christian. Or you say, Richard, I've been on a church roll for years. I didn't ask that. I said, have you been to Jesus at the cross? Because it's only at the cross that we find the forgiveness of our sins and we come into the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible says a number of things. One is that until we come to Jesus, we are dead in trespasses and sin. So first thing that happens to an overcomer when Jesus becomes our Savior is that we enter a royal family. We become members of a royal family. Paul tells us this in Romans 8, verses 14 and following, and he says this, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit, that we are the children of God, the children of God, then, heirs of God, 
and joined ours with Christ. We've come into a royal family. We've become members of the royal family. You become a son and daughter of the King of Kings. And that is your status at this moment. How does it all happen? By being born again. We're hearing so much about being born again. That's where the action is. Jesus said so. John chapter 3 and verse 3. He's talking to Nicodemus and Jesus answered unto him and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So you say, how can I be born again? Simply by coming to Jesus. And there's no other route. And there's no other way. And you may say, but Richard, I don't want to go that way. The Bible says then, you'll never enter the kingdom. And you'll never see it. And when we come to Jesus and make Him our Savior, every sin is washed away. And we stand complete in Him before God our Father. He doesn't see the sins. And He doesn't remember our sins anymore. Those people who say to you, oh, I can forgive you, but I can't forget. They've never found Jesus. They've never found God our Father. God says, when I forgive you, I remember your sins no more. I put them out of my mind. That's forgiveness. And there's no other way. Our spirit that was dead in trespasses and sins has been made alive by Jesus Christ. That's what it means to be born again. And when that happens to you, you become the member of a royal family. And secondly, when we are members of a royal family, we are members by adoption, which is what I read to you from Romans 8 and verse 15. Ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption. God has adopted every one of us who believes in Jesus into His family. And that's the only way you can call yourself a child of God. We got into this in two of our Bible study groups this week and the votes were about 50-50. Who's a child of God? Oh, everybody. Oh no, just the Christian. And away it went. Some of them are still working on it. The Bible says you only become a true child of God when you're born again, when your sins are forgiven, and then God brings you into His family as a son or daughter of His, a brother and sister with our Lord Jesus Christ. What a privilege! Don't you realize what Jesus did for you when He died upon the cross? And because of that, all the rights and privileges of God have come down to each and every one of us. That's why when we're praying for healing, we're asking our Lord to heal a member of the family. Isn't that fantastic? Secondly, when we are king's kids, when we're overcomers, we live by the royal law. The royal law. You can find it in James chapter 2 and verse 8. And it says, If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, and ye do well. What is the royal law? Love. It's the love of God. And it's the love of God that Jesus sheds abroad in the hearts of all those who belong to Him. The others don't know anything about it. They can, but they don't. And that's the royal law by which the members of the family have got to live. But we find something more. We are under a new law, and this was promised right back in the prophecy of Jeremiah, and it's beautifully put in chapter 31 and verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law 
in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and they will be, I will be their God and they shall be my people. What is God saying? God's saying, when the Messiah comes, when my Son comes, He will begin to put my law into the hearts of every one of my people. And He writes into our hearts this new law of love. Love first of all to God Himself. As J.R. was saying and Rose was saying, it's the praise. And as we praise, we begin to lift up our whole beings in adoration to God. And the love begins to flow. A love that's in response to His love toward us. And what's God's love toward us? In that while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. And as we respond in love, so His love returns and begins to flow out to other people. And the Bible says, and we've been studying this in 1 John, if you don't have love for other people in your life, you don't love God. And if you don't have love for other people in your life, God isn't dwelling in you. Why? Because God is love. And when He dwells in us, that love is bound to flow out and reach those around us. We find that Paul says something else, and he says it rather strongly. He says, if you don't have love toward other people, your Christian faith is useless. It's a total write-off. 1 Corinthians 13 and the opening verses. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not love, it profiteth me nothing. Paul, what are you saying? He says, it's only valuable when the love of Jesus is flowing. You may have all the gifts of the Spirit, and no love, you amount to nothing at all. So do I. You may have the faith, to pray for people for healing. You may have the faith to do anything, Paul said. If you haven't got the love, forget it. It's useless. The law of the family of God is a royal law. And it's a law of love that's written in our hearts. And you see also, it's a universal law. It's not just for this nation. It's not just for white people. It's for everyone. Love is something that everyone understands. Love is something that everyone can feel as it flows from you to them. It doesn't matter where you go across this world. If you have the love of Jesus, you're going to touch lives. Love is something that everyone needs. How people are hurting in your family and mine, our friends, our acquaintances, people we touch day by day, they're hurting. Why? Because they need the love of God. And love is something that everyone cries out for. Again and again, when you get into a counselling situation and someone's got into deep immorality, you find that what they were seeking was love. And they went in every wrong direction to find the love that God gave from the cross. Everyone needs to be loved. And everyone needs to be wanted. And love is something that everyone will respond to. Absolutely everyone. Take the position of Dave Wilkerson. When he went into New York City and he went to Harlem, and he reached out to those drug addicts. It was one thing and one thing only that got through to them. It was the love of Jesus flowing through this country preacher. And it changed lives and it took kids off drugs and all sorts of things happened. And it, love always works. Why? Because the Bible says 
God is love. Also notice this. You're under a law that works in every situation. It has to because it originates with God. And the Bible says love never fails because God never fails. Last week in our groups, we shared together, and I shared a little bit of it with you on Friday night. If you have a wrong relationship with anyone, I told you to go and say you're sorry, ask their forgiveness, and tell them that you love them, especially if it's your husband or wife. And it wouldn't be a bad thing if it's mum or dad. And it wouldn't be a bad thing for some parents if we did this for our children. Because it's the forgiveness that heals the relationship. One of our ladies went home from one of our groups last week, I won't tell you which group, and went to her husband and said, I'm sorry for anything I've done wrong, forgive me. I love you. The poor guy freaked out. (laughs) The next day, she had a bunch of flowers. She had a basket of fruit. He didn't know what had hit him. And yet we wait years to say, I'm sorry. Because we are so high and mighty and so proud. And then also, if you're in the royal family, you're called to do royal service. If you're a member of the royal family, if you belong to the king, you have to perform royal service And all of us do this as Christian believers. And everything that we should do should be for the King of Kings. I think this is such a vital principle. We are called as God's children to live to the praise and glory of the name of Jesus. No longer do you have to work out what Mrs. So-and-so is going to think and say. You may have been in a church for years and everybody in that church always had to be so careful of Mrs. So-and-so because she ruled the church. And God says, that's not it. Everything that you do, everything that you say, everything in your life is to be to the praise and glory of the precious name of Jesus. And secondly, notice this. All we do is in the strength of our Lord Jesus Christ and in His power. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Bible says again, and Jesus is speaking, He says, without me, you can do nothing. Just before I left tonight, a friend called up to say that they were trying to help in this situation of John leaving home. And the friend said, I feel so helpless. Good. That's the first qualification. Now... Now that you're useless and now that you're helpless, let God work through you. Why? Because you're a member of the royal family. Because you receive the power from Jesus. And Jesus says to us, all the power that you need comes from my Holy Spirit into your life and into every situation. We are king's kids. And we should not be living as defeated Christians in Jesus. He's given us everything. And as J.R. said earlier in the service, appropriate into your life what Jesus has done for you. But just in case you're too high, let me say this. As overcomers in training, we have special responsibilities. We have special responsibilities. Now remember, we have a high calling in Jesus Christ. If you're a young person in this service, I challenge you to get into this book and see the life that Jesus has called you to. It's the highest life in the world. There's nothing easy about being a Christian. It's a challenge. But the beautiful thing is that when Jesus has laid the challenge before us and when He's laid all the responsibilities on us, He then lives this life through us. And that's what makes the difference. He gives us the ability to fulfill the things He's asked us to do. First of all, our responsibilities are to the King. First of all, to the King. I find this is hard and yet it's easy. For everything in my life has to go toward Him 
and Him first, and not to anyone else. I'm not here to please what other people think. And yet some of you, I hear it from what you say, you're still controlled by what others may say about you. That doesn't matter. What about the king? What is he saying? What's he said in his word? Go ahead and fulfill those responsibilities. And how will we do it? First of all, a daily crucifixion of self for the king. Every day you and I are going to have to go to the Lord and say, Lord, I want to crucify my flesh, my old nature, and I want you to give me that new nature so that I can live through this day to your glory. And when we do, Jesus will begin to take from our lives the gossiping, the gluttony, the unclean thoughts, the unclean imaginations, all the things that are not of Jesus that are dwelling in us. But we're going to have to do it every day. And secondly, there's going to have to be a daily commitment to the King. The world is so strong, it pushes in, it pressures us in every which direction. And it's only when we go to our Lord every day and commit ourselves again and say, Lord, empty me of self. Fill me to overflowing with your Holy Spirit that we can live this life that He's laid before us. I don't know how many of you heard the 6 o'clock news, but I thought the first 10 minutes were absolutely unbelievable. First of all, a couple who had taken a retarded child and beaten her up so much that they counted a hundred bruises on her dead body. That was number one. Secondly, the cousin who had shot his cousin. Third, the man who's calling himself son of Satan who called up the police to say, I've stabbed two people, and he had. And these sort of things are pushing in on us all the time, every day, and our lives have to be committed to Jesus afresh every morning. If we really want to walk this life and live it in victory and live it as overcomers. Secondly, our responsibilities are to the family. Our responsibilities are to the other overcomers in training. We have a responsibility to other Christian believers around us. This is the picture that Paul gives us in 1 Corinthians 12. He says, look, you're all members of the body of Jesus Christ. Every one of us here tonight who's accepted Jesus into our lives, we're all members of Christ's body and we have a responsibility. Why? Because the things I do affect you and the things you do affect me. And if you have a burden, we want to lift it. If you have a joy, we want to share it. Why? Because we're all members of the body of Jesus Christ. And we have that responsibility to other Christian believers. You watch. The moral error of a priest or a minister or a Christian leader affects the whole body of Jesus Christ. It hits the press and people say, there you are, that's your Christian. That's your Christian. And we all bear one another's burdens because we're all part of the body of Christ. What do people think of Jesus who know you? What do people think of Jesus who know you? They may have no way of knowing Him except in you. And together we have a responsibility to each other which is very vital. And also, thirdly, we have a responsibility to the losers. If we're the winners and those who've never found Jesus are the losers, we have a responsibility to every one of them. And we need to reach out loving hands to them. And they need us so desperately. And we find that Jesus talks about this to His disciples at the end of Matthew's Gospel. And He says, All power is given unto Me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things 
whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Jesus says, now look, you've got a mission field and it's the world outside and around you and it starts at home around your family table and it reaches out to those you work with and it touches those friends you're with in your leisure time activities and suddenly Jesus shows us that everyone who touches our lives are part of those that he wants us to touch with his love and our world is hurting and they need the love of Jesus so much and Jesus says to his disciples I want you to do three things Preach the gospel. You all do that every day by your life in Jesus Christ. They're watching you. They're listening. They know if you are really what you say you are. Every one of us, without exception. And then we preach from the Word of God as well. But first, It's the life of the believers. Secondly, Jesus says, heal the sick. Heal the sick. Jesus said to us, lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And we believe it. And we believe that's a promise for this generation. And that's why we pray with the laying on of hands. And Jesus says, cast out devils. Jesus still sets people free who've been trapped by Satan for years. Then Jesus said to his disciples, freely ye have received, freely give. And I think he's saying it to every one of you. I've done so much for you. What are you doing for me in your daily walk? I want you to do something tonight. When you leave this sanctuary, if you belong to Jesus, I want you to go out with your head high, with the knowledge that you're an overcomer in training. That because of what Jesus did on the cross, you're a winner. The people around you are defeated in the world, but you're a winner. And you can go out and, as I said last Friday, live your life above the natural because of God. You're a member of the royal family. And if you're not, If you're one of those losers, don't leave this sanctuary tonight until you've got yourself right with Jesus. The world thinks they've won and we've lost. And Jesus says it's not that way. You are the winners because I had the victory on the cross and I want to live your life through you every day. Let's pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, move amongst us by the power of your Holy Spirit at this moment. Convict us and just step into our lives and may we just commit everything of self into your loving hands. Lay that challenge before us, that high calling that we have in you, that we may see that the life in Jesus is not only a challenge, but it's exciting, and that you have every answer to every problem. And Lord, give us the faith to step out in victory with you, and we say thank you. And all the people say it.